Hello, my name is Blake Knobloch, and this is my YouTube channel, The Back End. What my channel is about is helping people have more autonomy over their lives, over their minds. And what we're going to be going over is uh, my analytics, and at the end of the video, the revenue, which I know you all probably care about. But first, the impressions, because if we just give off stats like this without contextualizing them with my goals, with what I'm trying to accomplish, that's just chatter. And we do not like chatter here, do we? We don't. So uh, 2.1 million impressions, that seems like a shit ton, right? Well, what an impression is, is whenever the thumbnail shows up on the page. So you go to the home page, you see thumbnails, those are impressions. You look at this video over on the side of the screen, all those suggested videos, those are impressions. I got that 2.1 million times, uh, kind of a slow decline throughout the month, and I believe that's mostly because I posted uh, less videos. I, uh, I was doing, trying to do a video every day for like five weeks in December and early January. It, there was no benefit to it. I didn't get, I got more views, but it was my same subscribers watching the videos. I wasn't getting more views, and the subscribers were not watching more than one video, which is not good. I wanna have it so um, my viewers watch more, more videos. The new viewers watch more videos because that's what YouTube wants, and I want them to promote my content because then more folks are gonna see it. The impression click-through rate, meaning every time those impressions were shown, how many times did my videos get clicked on the thumbnails is 4.4%. Again, not great. Um, it's not bad. I think YouTube is, it, it, it's not even fair to compare this um, between all of YouTube. It's not fair to compare some random video in mine because I'm in this sub niche of resale. And so what makes more sense is to compare mine against someone like Rally Roots. And they're about five, five or sorry, 4.5% as well. So... I'm pretty okay with that. Uh, you can see the the CTR click through rate kind of goes up and down. My best was 5.2%. Um, that was on this this video. So I guess I should learn this that when I put this number in the video title, they like that. I'm not really sure. Um, but that that video probably spurred the highest CTR. I you know it's kind of it's hard to really tell what is good or what's bad. What I should do then is next month or this month. Next month meaning March when I look over this month February stats, I should compare my videos to this historical average or this monthly average and then those are the best ones. So, what I can ascertain from that is that this make 70 bucks an hour grocery shopping video was my uh had my best ctr meaning that engaged the most people but that brings another question are they watching these videos because they want to learn things or are they watching videos just to just to get some fish and when i say that i mean there's that old saying about teaching a man to fish and giving him fish am i giving men fish or am I teaching them how to fish? And what I want to do is give them fish. I don't want, I'm sorry, what I want to do is teach them how to fish. I don't want to be given handouts because who's that helping, right? I mean, I guess me in, in a sense, because I'm making more money off the views, but just, I, it's not a satisfying thing for me personally at all. You can see I have about 175,000 views and that's pretty just, you know, between four and 7,000 a day. Yeah, 74. This low point here is at 47. And again, you can see how this kind of relates to when I post videos, but when I'm posting them every day or like five times a week, the um, it is not as pronounced, the, uh, the increase. Unique viewers, about 106,000. And again, that is not even related at all to my, my how I'm posting videos. When I stop for a while, it goes down. So probably I should be doing this posting probably at this frequency right here, uh, which is like every two days, every three days, which again, seems kind of like a lot, but two videos a week, not that crazy. Uh, what I am not pleased with at all is my unique viewer to views ratio. It's about 1.6. If you watch the Rally Roots video, which I did, you should too. You should watch every video with, of anyone who shares their stats because more data is more good. They're at about 3.6. That's the ratio from unique viewers to views, meaning they are way better than me at getting viewers to, to binge their content, to go through it. And I think that's because uh, of the way that they 
always mention other videos. And I also think it might have to do more with, with their, their demographics. I think that probably uh, people who focus more on eBay sales and that kind of stuff, they're going to get more viewers who are watching as they're listing or maybe because they're just bored or as the content I create, like how to list DVDs. There are very few people who are just casual YouTube viewers who will watch that. And so partially, I think it's because the reason my ratio is so low, not because they're so high, they're so high because they're great, but mine is so low because um, I don't think the content really uh, demands binging. But do I want to increase that? Yeah, absolutely. As we scroll down, we can see that uh, YouTube breaks up where the traffic comes from right here. Most of it for me is browse features, and there's also suggested videos and YouTube search. Now, what's interesting about these is my suggested videos, that's kind of low. And the reason for this is, is a lot of my uh, traffic does not come from other people's videos. I don't know why, but I had to figure that out. Maybe the view duration's too short. Maybe the thumbnails are bad. Maybe my tags are off. I don't know, but I want that number to be higher up closer to like 30%. Um, YouTube search though, on the flip side, about 16%, that's pretty good. Uh, and I credit this to the fact that I make a lot of evergreen content, meaning content that people are continually looking for. So it's things like uh, how to prep VCRs, how to sell Guitar Hero guitars, the kind of stuff that's not trendy or not based on like, oh, follow my day every single day. It's more, here's the value. Um, you find it, you know, and this, that, that you find it comment is even further supported right down here with Google search being a huge, um, component of my external traffic. And so a lot of my videos are things people are searching and I get less views in comparison to that, um, from routine viewers who are trying to like watch every subscribed video. And I think you can tell even more of that when we get to the um, the notifications ratio. Because that stat over there even further proves what I'm talking about. You go further down here, and you can see my main um, retail, or my main YouTube search terms. It's retail arbitrage. Gives me about 6%. And then my name and Amazon stuff. And then books <laughs> is 7%. But um, down here, excuse me. On this side, the traffic source suggested videos uh, that that further suggests or further shows that my views, my videos are bleeding views to other channels. And that's not like, again, inherently bad, but if I'm trying to foster a sense of community and I'm trying to grow my channel and I'm trying to uh, teach people, not just in one video, but over months and months and months, then I really cannot be giving away those views. Uh, and then what's this over here? Oh, this is my playlist. This again just shows you how bad I am at making playlists. Um, I have to take however long it takes. It's going to take fucking 20 hours probably. I'm not looking forward to it. But I have to take however long it takes to delete all my playlists that are just like worthless. And then rebuild them to make sense to encourage uh, continual views. Because that's what YouTube wants. That's what it all comes down to. Uh, YouTube is going to do things that make them more money. I'll make more money because I get part of the ad split, but they're going to do things that make them more money. And so I have to figure out how can I balance things that makes YouTube more money with things that teach people. And I'm not saying that YouTube does not want to teach people. I'm saying their priority is cash. Um, and making educational videos isn't always the best way to get cash. I could just, I was telling somebody else this DC picker, we were talking about YouTube and I was like, Hey man, if you want to get more views, just cut your dick off and jump in a fire because I guarantee you that'll get you a million views. Now, would that help anyone? Absolutely not. But I think that kind of extreme example highlights the kind of uh, examination required to have a good YouTube channel, at least in, in my opinion. Now, let's go over to engagement and see how I'm engaging with viewers because the first step, right, is how do you reach them? The second step is engagement. And you're going to see my watch time was up, which is good, but that could just be because I posted more videos. And the average view duration is down 1%, but that's, again, kind of marginal. That's like the 4.4 the CTR. It really isn't, uh, you can't designate a, a cause for the 1% decrease. It could just be less folks watching YouTube. They're worried. They're back at school. Who knows? 
So the watch time went down considerably as I posted less videos. Now, does that mean that just because I was posting less videos, I was getting less views? I don't think so. That, that doesn't account for this drastic drop. What I think that this is, is once you start posting less than like two videos a week, YouTube uh, begins to suggest your more popular videos less. So what I have to do and why I'm making this video is because I have to get to a routine of posting like three times a week. Now, understanding the best way to do that, that takes further examination, but at least I know three times a week is probably uh, the sweet spot where I can continue to, the least amount of work I can do to produce the best result because I don't want to I don't want to spend 90 hours a week doing this. I want to do this part time. The podcast on Friday is going to be about I think about not being a full-time reseller. Not being a full-time YouTube person. Not being a full-time anything because of the mindset it demands, okay? Uh, here's what I am. I'm a full-time Blake. I spend 24 hours a day being Blake. Now, can I have that same commitment to anything else? No, I don't think so. So I should view it as part-time. And when I view it as a part-time business or hobby, then my priority is not doing it, but optimizing it. See what I'm saying? Th those are just the kind of things I'm trying to change. Um, let's go further into this. So my, my top viewed video in terms of hours was this Amazon Consumer Electronic Palette Unboxing. It's like a three hour live stream. So yeah, it's gonna have the most views. Um, in terms of the things that are ranking. It just ranks high for Amazon pallets. I should probably make more content about that. Uh, about a third of the, uh, the hours watched is uh, a Dollar Tree video. And then the, yeah, these other, these are, are just retail arbitrage. So definitely my most popular uh, topic in terms of hours watched is retail arbitrage. Um, in terms of videos, you know, different views, and then this pallet return video in terms of just gross hours. When examining my end screens, I'm not really getting a huge amount of views from end screens. Um, it's not, obviously it's significant. I mean, this is probably a thousand views when it's all said and done if you looked at the whole list, not just the top five, but it's not like 10,000, okay? So this video right here gets like um, probably... 25,000 views a month, and I'm only getting 145 clicks out of it. So I'm not doing that good. Or maybe end screens are just not useful. I don't know. Again, things I have to experiment with, but at least I know. Here's my playlists. Dollar Tree, Retail Arbitrage is the best. Make Money is the second best. You see, that's what I'm talking about. Why would I ever title a playlist Make Money? That, that does not give the viewer any more information than the bare minimum. Just things I'm trying to work on. Everything else down here, it's almost so low that it's not, it's not, um, it's not even helpful. I guess this is nice. Uh, video is the top end screen element type. Not best for viewer, not playlist, not most reason to upload, not subscribe. I'm getting 0.1% clicks on my subscribe. That's it. why even bother, right? Why even bother? But I wouldn't know that unless I made this video. I mean, I would, but I... You, the point I'm trying to make is if I didn't have this standardized process of going through every month and examining what I did the last month, I wouldn't know that. And that's what's more important than any of the individual stats is actually doing this and committing to the process because you believe that the process will produce better results. And what are those better results? They're the things that you care about. It all, it all circles around the same toilet bowl hole, right? <laughs> On to... Audience. So I had, again, 106,000 unique viewers, but 1.6 views per viewer. Yuck. How bad is that? I want to be up closer to like five. I mean, is that possible? Who knows? But why not go for it? Let's say, okay, next month, let's get two. Let's say the average viewer watches two videos. That would be a huge increase. A, 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 what is that? A 20% increase? That'd be huge. And obviously, if my subscribers increased by almost 60%, so can my views per viewer. But let's talk about subscribers now, uh, because the graph here, you know, man, kind of boring. The really only uh, noticeable thing is this gap right here, corresponding to this gap right here. Um, 
uh, it's almost it's almost too anecdotal to to worry about. But it does show that again what I was telling you about earlier, where I should do, be doing about two videos a week, three a week. I think that's my sweet spot. So now again back to subscribers, huge huge increase, and this is because last month posting videos every day. I got way, way, way less subscribers. And it wasn't because people were unsubscribing, but they just didn't want to see my face every single day. Or if they were unsubscribing, it was happening like two days after the fact. Because I, I didn't have any days where I lost subscribers, but there were some days where it was like 20. And I'm seeing that this month too, as I take even more extended breaks and do more long form content. So probably my March video for February is going to be worse than this month, but worse in the sense that I got less views, worse that I made less money probably. It's not worse in the fact that I'm analyzing it worse. I'm analyzing it better. I'm seeing things clearly. Uh, and the, the clear picture is what I did for the past four weeks wasn't working. And that's, that's, that's superbly valuable. My not subscribed views, 81%. Yikes. That's really, really bad. If you have any advice on how to fix that, please tell me because I've been racking my brain for the past two days and I cannot figure out how to fix this. We go over to the subscriber bell notifications. Pretty standard. Although, um, what it does say is that I have 9.3K, 9,300 um, people who both subscribe to notifications and have the YouTube notifications. So like the little boop on their phone pops up when I post a video. And I'm not getting even close to that per video when I post one. So I'm a, a bit dubious of that number. But it also might mean that just they don't care. They only want to watch certain kinds of videos. I don't know. It's, it's the kind of thing where I can't tell you until I begin examining it for months and months and months and make incremental changes. The gender... Uh, this is no, not surprise at all. No surprise at all. 66% uh, male, 34% female. And that's actually up in terms of female viewership. There are, are some months when I have like 90% male. It's crazy. And I think that's because of my personality. I think it's because of the things that I target. Um, if I were to go more of like a vlog style... And I were to do that and try to foster a sense of community and, and, and try to, to bring in more casual viewers who are maybe watching as they listen on eBay or Poshmark or whatever, I think I'd get more female viewers. I don't do that. Uh, I'm kind of abrasive and kind of gruff. And I, I, I don't necessarily think that my personality appeals to a lot of women in terms of like trying to learn things. I always think that if you're trying to make content for women, you want to focus more on like the community aspects, like being friendly and that kind of shit. If you're trying to get more men to view, you want to focus more on like the actual information. That's just the way, in my opinion, uh, people in, in generalized terms, obviously, I'm not speaking to individuals. I'm speaking to groups of people. And when we're, we're referring to groups of people, I think that that's pretty safe to say that that's how those groups, male and female, um, digest information. The age demos are interesting too because I'm getting no teenagers, very few like college students, uh, and then the vast majority of my subscribers are older than me, <laughs> which isn't to say that that's not weird. I think once you hit like 25, every year is its own experience, and so you can have some really fart, <laughs> some really smart 25 year olds, <laughs> some really dumb 31 year olds. <laughs> me and some really 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 dumb 60 year olds you know that's just the way it goes um and so not to say that they shouldn't be listening to me but it's just kind of cool that no matter who you are no matter how old you are you can still find value in the uh in the content i'm saying that's just my you know my my, my two cents on that the top countries no shit united states and canada and uk I, I don't speak anything else but english so it would make sense that uh English-speaking countries make up most of my views. Also, I do a lot of Amazon FBA videos and retail arbitrage videos, and those have no application at all for other countries. Now, if you go into the Seymour and you see all these fucking crazy countries, what that most likely is is people using VPNs. I don't think there's someone actually in Liberia watching my videos. I think it's somebody with a VPN using, like, you know, NordVPN or whatever, and they're going through those, those countries. I don't think they're actually... um from the from those places because 
you know, that just makes more sense to me. That that's that's Occam's razor. Okay, now uh, now we're going to the part of the video I think everyone is really concerned with, and that's the revenue. How much money I made on YouTube last month? How much do you think it is? You think it's a lot? I don't think it's a lot. <laughs> I think it's kind of a small amount, but it's definitely more, and I'm de more than I made a year ago. That's not, yeah, that's true. Uh, and definitely money that I appreciate. Uh, my best month was, I think, August of last year when I cleared about $7,000. And then um, this month, I made way, you know, about a third of that, a little less than a third of that. And it was uh, $2,667.26. Uh, and that's based off of my, um, my CPM of about $27. Now, if you do the math, you're going to say, what the hell? Why is the monetized playbacks times the CPM way more than this? And that's because the CPM uh, represents what I get after YouTube takes their cut. So whatever this times this divided by this or this divided by that, one of the two. Math, who knows? Uh, that's like the total revenue. And then that minus this is what YouTube gets. So that, that's why there's that discrepancy there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going between a hundred bucks and like my worst day was $61. Um, again, I'm pretty much around like $26,000 or 2,600 bucks the past few months. We go 28, 24, 29, 26, 26. I'll be about 25 in February. I bet if I wanted to make more money, what I would do is I would post only retail arbitrage bolo videos because those do very well for me. And maybe I will, who knows? Um, maybe I'll find a way or I'll brainstorm a way to make those that type of content more applicable to what I'm trying to accomplish. I don't know. Um, but just for those who are curious, I'm not making like 10 grand a month on YouTube. That'd be nice if I was, but um, it's mostly just from my older... Uh, if I post a new video, I'll get about 50 bucks on it, 100 bucks on it. And then, you know, there's the, the, the additional revenue from my, my body of work. And mostly, uh, you're going to see that these two videos right here are making the most money. These three videos, these top three videos kind of swap spots. So even though this video right here made 80 bucks, next month it might make me 100 bucks or, or 1,000 bucks. And even though this one right here made me a thousand bucks, the next month I might swap spots here and make me six hundred. They're not they're not guarantees. Um, I don't know why they are changing or swapping. I think it has to do just with minute changes in in the YouTube environment. You know, video other folks are making and just small changes YouTube may make to their algorithm. I think that's the. That's the video, guys. Uh, I hope that what I shared with you was very helpful in terms of uh, helping you create your own goals, your own processes, your own tracking systems uh, for your YouTube channel. And hopefully the insights I give you may serve as benchmarks. You know, there are tons of content creators who do this, watch all their videos, uh, see what they're having. And then that's going to give you a place, you know, where you fall amongst the ranks. Again, I think the places that I do good in would be CTR uh, and, and CPM. And what I do bad at is the ratio of unique viewers to views and also impressions. So what I have to work on is encouraging more people to watch more videos. Watch more of my videos. <laughs> and then I don't know how to fix my impression problem. It might just be that I'm doing good, but I'm choosing bad topics, meaning I should just change uh, the niche that I work in, or it may be my titles are bad. It may be my tags are not good. So what I'll have to do uh, sometime this month, I should really do it this weekend when I have time, is go through all my videos, uh, update the thumbnails, update the tags, most importantly, update the playlists, and then see if in March or the last two weeks of February, that creates a noticeable change, either positive or negative. Thank you for watching. Really appreciate your viewership. Don't be a shithead. And please, if you can, watch more of my videos and share the videos on your various social media pages because that's what we're trying to do. You know, I hope I've made it very clear to you guys that I'm not trying to squeeze money out of you, that I want to only help people make their own money and be more independent. And so if you can help me do that, it would be immensely appreciated. I'll see you guys later. And again, no shithead behavior.
<laughs> See you later.